All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick's on the Power. So you guys keep asking me to do another Q&A, and I aim to please. So here's another Q&A video for you guys. Um, I opened up the forum for you guys to ask questions on my Instagram page. So if you go to that post, you can see all the questions that I was asked. Um, so if you haven't followed my Instagram and you want to participate in the next q and I'm going to put the uh, username right here, and there's also going to be a link in the description. Um, so it's at Nick Strength Power if you guys want to ask questions and participate in the Q&As. Um, it's just easier to do it on Instagram because I have less followers on there, um, and I can actually get to more people's questions, whereas when I do it on, on uh, YouTube, I get you know thousands of questions. I just can't get through everybody. Um, so let's get started here. So another cool thing for you guys, this video is going to be brought to you by Redcon1. So Redcon1 is offering... Um, one of you guys that's watching this video right now is going to get a $500 Redcon 1 gift card to use on their site for anything you want. They just got in the new MRE bars. Those are really good. They got the MRE light. Um, so $500, all you have to do is like this video, be a subscriber, and leave a comment in the comment section below, and I will pick from one of your comments at random. And one of you guys is going to get a $500 gift card just for watching this video. So thank you guys in advance. I love any opportunity to give back to you guys. All right, so I got hundreds of questions. I'm just going to be going through them on my phone and trying to answer as many as I can, the ones that I think are the best questions. I'm going to try to get to all of you. So uh, if I don't get to you, I'm sorry, but I'm going to do more Q&As in the future. Hopefully, I'll get to everybody. And that's the hard part about these, man, is I love to answer your guys' questions. I love to talk to you guys and interact. But there's so many interactions, man. It's hard to get to everybody. But I do appreciate every single one of you that asked the question. I'll try to get to as many of you as possible. So first question is from Joe Hall Fitness. He asks, are you going to be at the Body Power Expo this year? That's in the UK. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be there this year, but I'd like to go there at some point in the future. I'm going to try to travel to more shows within the U.S. Um, I'm thinking about doing uh, the New York Pro maybe, possibly the Toronto Pro up in Canada. So those are options as well. Um, best tips for cutting. Obviously, I'm a big fan of the keto diet. Anything low carb is going to be a good cutting diet um, for most people in a general sense. Uh, Dreadnought asks, why does your dad look like a copy paste of you? I mean, because we're related, dude. That's my dad. Alex Cara Weightlifting asks, are you going to compete anytime soon? And if so, do you feel like you know how to prepare better now? So I am planning on competing at some point in 2018. It's not going to be an NPC show this time. I'm going to pick a natural organization and it's probably going to be in the fall of 2018. And I'm going to do the natural classic physique uh, division. So that's my plan for competing in 2018, hopefully in the fall. And I do think this time around, I should be able to prepare a little bit better. I'm about five foot nine inches tall. Um, the last show that I did, I cut way too much. I started my prep around 220 and I got down to 143. Um, this time around, I'm hoping to be in the mid 150s to maybe the low 160s on stage. So Balatanka asks, how many days a week are you training lately? So lately it's only been about four days a week. I'll do back and biceps Monday, chest and triceps Tuesday. Wednesday, Wednesday is either legs or shoulders. Um, Thursday is either legs or shoulders. Um, I'll alternate those two days. Sometimes Wednesday is an off day. And Friday will be arms. Saturday will either be chest or legs again. And Sunday is pretty much always an off day. But right now it's usually about four days a week. Um, I'd say, you know, most frequently, it's probably Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, the days that I train. And the other days, I'm trying to get videos out for you guys because what I do is I don't just record one video a day or two videos a day. Each week, I try to record or have the next week's worth of videos already recorded. So each week, I'm recording a full week of videos for the next week. So it actually does take a pretty good amount of time and effort to be as continuously um, consistent as I am with producing videos when I'm doing two videos a day, especially to get those videos out. I mean, it may seem kind of easy to be a YouTuber, but when you're trying to be consistent every single day of the year and you're talking two videos a day, consistent quality, um, there actually is some time that goes into that. So my training has been cut back to about four days a week to focus more on getting you guys the quality content. But when I start my prep for my next show, I'm definitely going to be doing at least six days a week. So this guy's username is just a bunch of numbers and letters, but he says, what do you think about Jay Cutler? So I've actually met Jay Cutler five times now, and Jay Cutler is honestly one of the nicest bodybuilders that I've met of any IFBB pro, and I've met pretty much all of them. Um, this year, I met a lot more uh, bodybuilders than I met in the past. At the Arnold Classic this year, I met Big Rami. I met Franco Colombo. I met Jay Cutler again this year. I met Jose Raymond, and Jose Raymond actually knew who I was. I met Steve Kuklo. He was one of the nicer guys that I ever met. Lionel Bayecki, Max Charles, Lee Priest, David Henry. I met Sean Ray this year. I met all kinds of guys at the Arnold this year, and they were all very nice. But uh, Jay Cutler is one of the most humble and nicest guys, um, considering the fact that he's won four Mr. Olympia titles. 
Jay's just the coolest dude, man. He always gives back to his fans. He always goes to these expos. I mean, he always makes a real effort to try to connect with the people that are uh, taking pictures with him and trying to meet him. I'm a big fan of Jay Cutler as a person and also as a bodybuilder. He had a great physique, an incredible physique. Um, my favorite year of Jay Cutler would probably be in 2009. It would probably be the most impressive year for me um, in terms of Jay Cutler's overall physique. So Dragon Tamer 5000 asks, do you prefer being ripped and shredded like you were at your bodybuilding show or do you prefer to be bulky and strong like you were when you were benching 350? I like being somewhere in the middle. Being ripped is great. You have crazy abs. You constantly have, you know, veins and striations all over your body. That's great, but from the mentality standpoint of being ripped, you're always hungry, you're a lot more tired, especially for a natural guy. It might be different for someone taking gear, um, but for a natural guy, you're gonna be hungry all the time, you're gonna be tired all the time, you're gonna have cravings all the time. And for a guy like me, you know, I like to go out to eat, I like to have a few beers, I like to relax and kick back, but I still like to train and have a decent physique. So it's really for me kind of finding a balance between pigging out um, and then, you know, super crazy strict diet. I try to be somewhere in between, maybe have one or two cheat meals a week and then eat pretty clean, you know, throughout the rest of the week. But for me, it's probably somewhere around 175, 170, um, where I feel my best and I probably look um, my biggest because when I'm cut down, um, I feel like I look pretty small and pretty thin and pretty, you know, just really depleted. But when I'm around 170, I still look pretty big, but I don't look fat. And when I get pretty much over, you know, 185 to the 200 range, that's when I start to look uh, pretty fat. So Danny Kenny asks, at the strongest point in your lifting journey, what is the heaviest you could bench press? So the most I could ever bench press was about 340 pounds. Um, that was maybe two or three years ago, and I was weighing probably close to 190 pounds when I benched that. And it wasn't in a competition, it was just a gym lift. I never really competed in the bench press in some of the powerlifting meets that I did. I would do either deadlift only or strict curl only, because my bench press really was never that great. I mean, even then, um, you know, 330, 340 is not that great of a deadlift for a guy weighing, or not that good of a bench press for a guy weighing 190 pounds. So man with not a plan asks, what are some of your favorite methods for training back? So I love T-bar rows. T-bar rows are great. I also love bent over rows with a dumbbell where you're propped up on a weight bench and just kind of rowing the weight. That's one of my favorite movements as well. And deadlifts are awesome too. So that's the good stuff asks, how big are your biceps? So right now they're probably between 17 and a half and 18 inches. You guys have seen some pictures on my Instagram. They're not as big as they've been in the past. When I was 220, um, you know, granted I was pretty fat, but my biceps were close to 19 inches around. Um, so that was a pretty good measurement for me. Um, and 18 probably being significantly, or at least a little bit lean, 18 was my biggest um, being around 190 pounds. I wasn't really fat, but I wasn't lean either, but they were a solid 18 plus inches. Um, when I was around 190 and that was probably my sophomore year of college. I, I think I was pretty big there. So Dylan Hill Yo asks, what's your biggest inspiration in the fitness world, brand or person, etc.? So I've gotta be honest with you guys, Chris Jones from Pump Chasers, formerly Physiques of Greatness, that is probably my biggest inspiration in terms of the fitness world. Um, really from a physique standpoint, number one, and number two from a business standpoint because he's shown what's possible. Um, when you're relatable, you have good YouTube content, and you can really reach you know, a mass audience. He's really shown what's possible with connecting with your audience, um, really developing a brand that your audience likes, um, and making a living just being a fitness personality, not being a pro bodybuilder, not being a crazy you know, juice head, but just being an average guy with pretty good genetics, really good genetics actually. Chris Jones has amazing genetics, but a, a natural guy with good genetics, just going to the gym and training every day like an average gym rat, um, can develop this massive following, an awesome brand, um, and make a living out of it and be very, very successful. He has a crazy house. He's got a Corvette, which I'm super jealous of, but I'll be getting the same type of Corvette that he's got maybe th this May for my birthday, um, but I'll get it in blue and not red because man, you gotta get blue, NSP blue, baby. But yeah, overall, Chris Jones, just from a you know aspiration standpoint of what I would like to see done with my YouTube channel, creating a brand, creating a community, um, being able to connect with your audience, Chris Jones has done an amazing job of doing that. And that's one of the things that I would love to do is connect on connect with you guys on the level that Chris Jones seems to have been able to do with you guys because you guys seem to love him or you know his followers seem to love him. Um, that's just one of the things that I hope to establish in terms of the community that I have on my channel. So I kind of answered this question already, but Cookie Fit Kev asks. For your next competition, what do you hope your stage weight will be? I'm hoping mid to high 150s, possibly low 160s. Again, last time it was 143. 
And again, my height is five foot nine, so I'm not a crazy tall guy. Um, so that's why those numbers in terms of weight are pretty low numbers. So Corey Cribs asks, can Sadiq Hodzovic get big enough to place top three in classic physique? So I, I believe anything is possible. Personally, I'm not that big of a fan of Sadiq's physique. I don't hate on the guy. I mean, he's a, he seems like a good dude. He's got a decent physique. But in terms of what classic physique is all about and what they're looking for, I just don't see Sadiq as being a top three guy or a guy that's going to win the classic physique olympia i don't think he has enough size that is one thing do i think he could put on enough size possibly um, but do i think he really has the structure that they're really really looking for in classic physique i don't think so if you look at chris bumstead or brian ainsley and compare them to sadiq you're looking at two very very different structures i think sadiq is just to a point where he's not going to be able to hang with these top guys he might be a top six guy if he puts on a little bit more size um, but really a top three threat to the Olympia. I just don't really see that. So Ha Jong Yo says, what do you foresee yourself doing in five to 10 years? Do you see yourself operating a gym like Bart Kwan, Bradley Martin, Steve Cook? I hope you never stop posting your concise, no BS, informative videos no matter what. So thank you for that. I appreciate that, bro. Um, so honestly, my five-year plan, I have a lot of plans for this channel, man, to be honest with you guys. And one of those things, I would like to open a gym. Um, and the motivation behind that would be to have a place where I could invite these pro bodybuilders to come train. We could do interviews, we could film their workouts and get a whole new realm of content for this channel. In addition to the type of videos that I'm posting right now, um, the informational videos, the bodybuilding coverage videos, I think a great auxiliary type of video for the channel um, would be having these guys come train, having these guys come talk to me, just a place where they can hang out. Maybe not a gym that's open to the public, but a gym where I can use to make more content for you guys. Um, and that a, a place that would be a friendly environment for these pros to come train. I have been in talks with several IFBB pros. I'm gonna be starting hopefully a new series here on this channel very, very soon. That you guys can look forward to seeing some fresh new content with some actual IFBB pros, maybe some interviews, um, that sort of thing. So I do have some things in the works in the near future. But for the long-term future of my channel, one of the things that I'm really excited about doing is sponsoring shows. Um, so next week, actually, I'm sponsoring the IFBB Indie Pro Show. That's going to be in Indianapolis. Um, that is March 31st. If you guys want to come out and meet me, I will be there. Um, and then the week after that, I'm sponsoring a natural bodybuilding show, the Mr. Cincinnati. That is an NGA show. And that's one of the things that I'm really excited about doing and I want to do a lot more of in the future. So one of my main goals with this channel is to give back to the industry that has given me stuff because I've, I've gotten a lot out of this industry. I've gotten a lot from having this YouTube channel. For some people, it's all about maximum number of views, maximum number of you know AdSense revenue from their channel, and they're just here to sit back and collect a check, and you're just gonna see clickbait videos, you know, talking shit about fake natties or whatever. Um, they're just trying to get maximum views, maximum money, sit back and make a check. But what I'm trying to do is I wanna give back to the industry that has given me so much. Um, because if I give back, I, I'm a strong believer in karma. So if I put into this industry, um, I'm going to get more out of it if I return something to it um, rather than just constantly taking views, constantly making videos and just taking from the industry, which I don't feel like I take too much from the industry because I try to contribute a lot of um, informative videos, give you guys some educational content, bodybuilding coverage, because there is no TV station for bodybuilding. There's no radio show on the radio for bodybuilding. You guys have to come to YouTube to get up-to-date bodybuilding information. So I feel like I'm putting a lot out there for you guys in terms of content and giving back in that regard, but I wanna start giving back monetarily. Now, the reason I say this, and a perfect example of this is my video that I did on Classic Physique. The Classic Physique prize money at the Arnold Classic, first place was only $5,000. So I made a video about it and I said I would double that prize money. I will contribute $5,000 to the first place winner of the 2019 Arnold Classic. And the reason I said that is because number one, I get a lot of great content for Classic Physique or from Classic Physique. So if Classic Physique succeeds, I succeed. So if I double the prize money of Classic Physique at the Arnold Classic, there's gonna be more people wanting to compete in the Arnold Classic. The caliber of competition is gonna be raised. The competitors will be happier. The shows will be better. And in return, I will have better content to offer to you guys. So that's a perfect example of me giving back and getting something back out of it. Because of Classic Physique as a, as a division, if that's successful, I will in turn be successful because I'm a big proponent of Classic Physique, which is why I promote it on my channel, because I want it to work. I want it to be successful. So giving money to that division is a way that I can give back and help that division, and that division will help me um, by growing, and I can cover more Classic Physique shows. So to make a long story short, my five to 10 year plan would be to get a lot more into promoting shows, sponsoring shows, 
and giving back from a monetary standpoint. I would like to have a gym as well. I like to have some kind of merchandise on my channel. And that's another thing that I would like to do, maybe start some kind of brand relating to old school bodybuilding, something like that, um, to build more of a sense of community. Like I said, looking up to a guy like Chris Jones, one of the things that made his community a community is pump chasers. Um, it's something that people felt like they could relate to. They were chasing a pump. Um, that's something people were passionate about. And as a result, it became a highly successful brand. Um, so my five to 10 year plan would definitely involve some sort of brand building on this channel. Again, rather than just making videos, I wanna make it something deeper than that. And I've got a lot of plans going forward to do so. So Nick Nodler asks, Lee Priest versus Dorian Yates. I would have to go with Lee Priest, man, just because he's my favorite of all time. All right, so Tasic 4 this is a question I get all the time. I'm going to address it for the last time. This is the last time I'm going to talk about this, guys. So he asks, why did you block Kenny Boulay? I saw a video where he said you blocked him, and I was wondering why. All right, so I want to clear this up for the last time. So Kenny Boulay is a guy, um, he's got a YouTube channel. He makes a lot of natty or not videos, that sort of thing. Um, he, he kind of made a reputation for himself as bashing other YouTubers, and he calls himself kind of the truth in fitness, and he calls out all these guys. Um, so a while ago, Kenny KO made a video saying that I blocked him on Instagram. Um, and the truth of the matter is, when he made that video, I had not blocked the guy on Instagram. I never even heard of the guy, didn't know who he was. Um, but he made this video and people kept sending it to me, so I clicked the video and watched it. And essentially he types in the name of my Instagram account wrong, and naturally my Instagram account does not come up because he spelled the name of my account wrong. I didn't block the guy, he couldn't find my account, and he made a whole video just based on the fact that he couldn't find my account, assuming that I blocked him and kind of throwing me under the bus as this bad guy for blocking him for no reason, saying he was nothing but nice to me and all this stuff. Um, and the, when the reality of it was, I never blocked this guy, never blocked him, didn't even know who he was. But the truth is, when I saw this video, I looked at his channel to see what kind of content he has, to see who this guy was. And all I saw was fake natty videos and just videos calling people out. So I was like, okay, this guy wants me to be next on his list. He wants to call me out next for blocking him. He's just trying to get um, some easy content. He didn't even ask me if I blocked him. He didn't reach out to ask or didn't really you know, spend the time to find my email address or message me on YouTube or really confirm that I had actually blocked him. He just typed in the name of my uh, account and couldn't find it. So when I saw that he was throwing me under the bus and I saw what kind of content he had on his channel, then I blocked the guy. Because I thought, you know, screw this guy. He's making a whole video throwing me under the bus for blocking him, which I didn't even do. Um, and now, you know, all these people are hating on me for blocking this guy, which I didn't block him. So I'm getting heat for it anyway. So now I'm just going to block him because people already think I blocked him regardless. So I just blocked him. The truth of the matter is I don't have beef with Kenny KO. Um, I never made a single video talking negatively about him, although apparently he's made like four videos where he'll sneak in like a little diss at me. He'll call me small. He'll say my channel sucks. He'll say his videos are better than mine. You know, throw in disses at me. I've never talked about him on my channel. I've never made a video about him. I've never said a negative word about the guy. There's no beef between us. I don't care about this stupid drama. But yes, I did block him after he made that video just because I don't want to be associated with him. I don't want someone like that looking at my profile because that's what he seems to do on his channel is go through people's Instagram accounts, look at pictures, talk shit, call him a fake natty. And I just didn't want to be associated with that, so I blocked him. And really the fact that he never reached out to me to see why I blocked him, which I didn't, um, really rubbed me the wrong way that he just pulled the trigger and made a video about me without even asking me about it. That just really, it just really kind of pissed me off. So that's, that's why I blocked him after I saw the video. Um, overall, I just don't really care for the guy. All right, so the Div Yajit asks, why don't you make more vids on workout-related content, training programs, routines, etc.? So I actually do have a couple hundred videos on my channel doing workout routines, explaining different exercises for your arms, your back, your chest, whatever, you know, what have you. Um, but I kind of got away from that and focusing more on the bodybuilding history, the bodybuilding coverage, because that's what I want my channel to kind of become is more of a bodybuilding media outlet to go to for coverage, more so than, you know, an Athlean X type of channel where they do a bunch of different workout splits and stuff like that. And I was thinking about starting maybe a separate channel for that sort of thing, doing workout tutorials or something like that if people want to see it. Um, because I do get a lot of requests for that. Now, one thing I am planning on doing is adding in more vlogs to my channel. So I don't mean like the daily vlogs like you'll see on like a Logan Paul channel, you know, just me eating or drinking or whatever, just day to day activities, not that type of stuff. So maybe a once a week vlog and, you know, maybe only when I travel. So I think something that would be interesting and that you guys would like to see in vlog format would be when I travel to these bodybuilding shows like the Indy Pro, like the Mr. Cincinnati, my, like the Arnold Classic like the Mr. Olympia, like the New York Pro, whatever show it may be, 
showing you guys the behind the scenes part of traveling to that show, going backstage, going to the press pit, taking pictures, meeting pros, meeting fans, you know, meeting whoever. And that's one of my main goals for 2018 is to just get out there more, go to more shows and give you guys a more diverse range of content. Even though a lot of you guys do enjoy the main type of content that I make with the you know, bodybuilding history, bodybuilding coverage, I think a lot of people would enjoy seeing behind the scenes at a pro show, behind the scenes at a local show, or just people that have never seen you know, a natural bodybuilding show. Um, getting some footage of some natural shows, some natural guys, um, you know, maybe showing how the drug testing works at a natural show. Um, you know, maybe filming a judging panel at a pro show, something like that, behind the scenes stuff that you don't normally see. That's the kind of vlogs that I would like to make, is traveling to different pro shows, going to expos, going to events, and kind of showing you guys the world of bodybuilding outside of just YouTube videos and giving you guys a different perspective um, from, you know, kind of a behind the scenes lens of what's going on. I think you guys would really like that. And comment in the comment section below if you would like to see more stuff like that. So Meathead Shed asks, what advice would you give to someone who's young and wants to start competing? So my number one advice would be to stay natural. Don't give in to the urge to get big really quickly and take steroids. Just stay natural, start slow, build a good foundation, um, and take your time. That's the number one advice I'd give to a young guy looking to compete. Vam Sivlaga asks, do you work out with your father? I actually used to. We used to work out at the same gym and now we don't. Um, we work out at different gyms and we just really have different schedules so that's why we don't work out together anymore. But I used to and I did for a long time. Wend Love asks, what do you think about Breon Ainsley's victory pose? You should do more videos of some classic physique bodybuilding poses. So I think Breon does have an amazing victory pose. I pretty much love any pose um, where he does an overhead arm shot. I think he has incredible arms for a lot of those front poses. Um, that really helps him pull off, you know, those really classic lines and classic look. Um, having those amazing arms to pull off a victory pose, kind of like Frank Zane. His is more like Frank Zane's, uh, more so than Sergio Oliva's. What do you think about drinking and smoking and bodybuilding? So personally, I think smoking has no place in bodybuilding whatsoever. Um, drinking, you can work it in, man. I like to have a drink every once in a while. I don't. It's definitely not, you know, intuitive for bodybuilding. It's definitely counterintuitive, but you know, you got to relax every once in a while, but it's definitely not going to help your bodybuilding career. Um, but it's not going to destroy it either as long as you're not an alcoholic. So I am Anchor97 asks, I know there is no replacement for Hedge, but would you consider getting a hamster anytime soon? I'm not going to get another small pet for a very, very long time. And Hedge was probably, you know, the first and last possibly hedgehog that I'll ever get. I mean, I just don't want to get anything else that resembles Hedge. Hedge was, Hedge was the man, man. Hedge is irreplaceable. Russian Roulette asks, do you think you'll ever do videos on natural bodybuilding such as the IPE, WNBF, or OCB? Now I answered this question earlier and definitely, I'm definitely looking to promote more natural bodybuilding shows. I'm definitely looking to go cover more natural bodybuilding shows, but specifically I'm starting with an organization known as the NGA. So I'm sponsoring the NGA, Mr. Cincinnati. Again, I believe that is the first weekend of April. So if you guys wanna come out and meet me there, I'll be there. Um, you'll see my banner on stage behind all the competitors, so that'll be cool as well. Um, so yeah, natural bodybuilding is definitely going to have a larger role on my channel, specifically in the vlog form. So Zano and Sano asks, why do you always like Brad Fakeweight Dingleberry's Instagram posts? I like them ironically. I mean, I don't like them because I like them. I like them so people see Nick Strength and Power like this because most people know I'm liking it, you know, f for the irony of liking it. So Eric Witzke asks, what is your favorite sport outside of bodybuilding and powerlifting? Also, do you participate in any sports outside of bodybuilding and powerlifting? So I don't participate in any sports outside of bodybuilding and powerlifting. I'm a little bit into archery. Um, you know, I'm not so much into it now, but about a year ago, I was getting into it pretty deeply. My favorite sport that I like to watch, though, would probably be either the NFL or probably the UFC. So Troy the Bruh asks, if you reach a plateau, would you consider taking steroids? No chance. All right, so this is a good question. M. Lewis 199 asks, how do competitors get pumped up for a show? Obviously, they do some sort of workout right before they go on stage. How many reps, full body movements, light or heavy weight? Um, so this is actually a great question. Um, and in the early days, when I was going to the Arnold Classic back in 2009, 2010, 2011, they actually let me go backstage in the pump up room. So basically they have a whole gym set up backstage for these bodybuilders to work out however they want. And for the most part, I would say most bodybuilders pumped up with dumbbells. Some of them use bands, resistance bands, but for the most part, I saw a lot of dumbbell training, a lot of shoulder flies, a lot of curls. Um, some people even hop on the bench press to pump up their chest. But I'd say the number two things that I would see pro bodybuilders doing, or the, the two number one things that I would see them doing, is number one, some sort of dumbbell movement, and number two, push-ups. So Dave, the G1 asks, how often do you do cardio and how long? 
So I do cardio, I try to do it every single day and I try to do it for 60 to 90 minutes, however long uh, the episode of WWE that I'm watching. I like to watch you know, just random TV shows while I'm on the treadmill to make the time go quicker, but I try to do at least an hour a day um, and while maintaining a somewhat high daily caloric intake. How old are you and when did you get interested in bodybuilding? That's a good question. I'm 24 years old right now and I first got interested in bodybuilding. I think my dad showed me my first Flex magazine maybe when I was 12 or 13, so that's when I got started. Did you go to college? And if so, where and what did you major in? Did you finish? So I did go to college. I went to Northern Kentucky University. Um, I studied health science. My major was health science and my minor was psychology. So I got a bachelor's degree of science in health sciences with a minor in psychology. It took me like five or six years to graduate because I was bullshitting and you know taking semesters off. And But I did finish college. I was 23 when I finished. I actually am very proud of the fact that I did finish college because it's something that, you know, I really worked hard for. It took me a long time to do. And I think it was just a big milestone in my life. Now granted right now I'm doing this YouTube thing and I'm not using my degree at all, but this could all change and go away. And at least I have you know a degree and an education to fall back on if YouTube disappeared tomorrow. Um, it's not like I would be shit out of luck because I am educated and I have a degree and there's, there's always something I'm gonna be able to do with that if this doesn't work out the way that I see it working in the future. So James Watts 98 asks, when will you be competing again and will you vlog it? Again, probably in the fall and I'm definitely going to vlog it. RIP Hedge, do you have any other animals? I do have a pet Yorkie. She's actually laying down over there and her name is Peanut, named after Ronnie Coleman. Ain't nothing but a peanut. So Georgios Iocodamus asks, since they are natural shows, why are you not competing that often? So I'm not really sure what you mean by the fact that they're natural and, may, and why don't I compete that often? But the reason I don't compete that often is because I'm not that passionate about actually competing. So the thing is, you know, being a fan of pro bodybuilding, it's like being a fan of the NFL. I mean, you can be a high school football player and be a diehard NFL fan, even though you're never gonna be in the NFL, just because it's something that you enjoy doing. So I enjoy working out. I enjoy making changes to my body, um, but I really don't enjoy depleting my body down to the point um, where I'm, I just feel like shit. I might be shredded and I might look good, but I just don't really like depleting myself down that low. And I definitely don't like doing it more than once a year. Um, so watching pro bodybuilding, you know, it's good for a bodybuilding fan because we can kind of live vicariously through what these pro bodybuilders are doing. And I think that's why the fan base for pro bodybuilding is so big because I think 99% of the people watching it are never going to be pro bodybuilders. We just enjoy seeing, you know, what the potential is for someone to push their body on stage. And it's something that most of us are never going to do. 99% of us, I would say, um, if you've ever walked around a bodybuilding expo, you can look around. A lot of them are younger guys. Most of them are gym rats, college age guys, high school age guys. Most of them are never going to be on an IFBB stage. Myself is included in that category. I'm a massive fan of pro bodybuilding, but it's not because I want to be a pro bodybuilder. It's not because I want to compete all the time. It's because I like seeing what's possible with the human body. It doesn't mean I want to do that to myself, but it's just very, it's entertaining. I like watching the NFL as well, but I don't want to you know, get tackled by a 300 pound guy. I like watching the UFC, but I don't want to get my face beat in, but it's fun to watch two guys beat each other's faces in. So the point that I'm getting at, man, is just because I'm a fan of pro bodybuilding, it doesn't mean I'm a fan of competing, and it's certainly not something that I want to do very often. It just takes a lot of time and energy and effort, money, there's really no monetary gain whatsoever from being a natural bodybuilder because you're spending a ton of money on entry fees and food and supplements or whatever have you, and you're making no money in return. So it's really, it's not cost effective. It's not time effective. Um, you're depleting your body multiple times a year. It's just something that, you know, that's got to be your career. If you want to be a pro natural bodybuilder and you want to focus on that 24 seven, that better be your career. You better be training other natural bodybuilders and you better be making money from your physique alone. And that's something I never want to do. I never want to be the guy that makes money just off of his physique. Um, I want to have other things going in business rather than just being a guy that competes all the time and people know me as that perennial competitor. It's just not something I'm really that interested in. I'm much more interested in the media side of things and bringing information to people. Um, I think, you know, a talent that I have that is much bigger than my physique is you know my voice i think i have the ability to speak to a lot of people i have this platform um, i think i'm able to you know narrate these videos and tell stories in a way that obviously makes people want to watch it makes people want to subscribe it makes people want to keep watching i um, mean that's evident by the views and the watch time and the number of subscribers that keep going up and up every single month um, the, the main common thread to all my videos is my voice and the way that i narrate my videos 
So I'm much more interested in the future of what I can do um, in terms of promoting the sport of bodybuilding, using my voice, using my channel, and just using my ability to narrate. That's gonna get me a lot further in what I wanna do than trying to use my body as a natural bodybuilder to promote my channel. So that's my whole mentality on this whole thing. All right, so I'm gonna do a couple more questions because this video is getting pretty long and there's still, there's still hundreds more questions on here, but Ezekiel David Valdez asks, when are you getting the new Corvette? So that's a good question. I wanna get the Corvette very soon, but I have to wait till tax season is over because I gotta pay taxes here in mid-April. And you know, you can make money on YouTube, but the fact of the matter is, if you're making money on YouTube, the IRS is going to get you. They're gonna tax the shit out of you um, and I'm paying a lot of money in taxes, so I want to see exactly how much money I have left over after I pay taxes before I go and spend $50,000 on a car. I want to see exactly how bad the IRS is going to hit me first because, you know, self-employment tax is a bitch, especially if you're making money off of YouTube. The way it works is, man, the IRS, they just don't want you to win. They don't want anybody to get ahead. If you finally find a hustle for yourself and you find a way to make money on the side, where you're not having to work a nine to five all the time and you're, you can make a decent amount of money off of something that's not traditional, the IRS, the IRS is gonna take their piece of that pie. You better believe they're gonna take as much as they can. If you get ahead through a non-traditional means, they're gonna take as much as they can of that pie that you got and they're gonna eat the shit out of it. So that's the thing that a lot of YouTubers don't talk about is the fact that, yeah, you can make money on YouTube, but I'm looking at paying over 50% of my income in taxes. That's what I'm looking at right now for the tax of being a self-employed YouTuber. So yeah, you can make money, but taxes are going to be a bitch. And that's the thing that comes back to bite a lot of YouTubers in the ass is that YouTube doesn't automatically take taxes out of your checks. So you got all this money coming into your bank account that you haven't paid taxes on yet. So a lot of people are gonna go ahead and spend that money before tax season comes around and they don't know what's coming. Tax season comes, they owe $60,000 and they've spent all the money they've made on YouTube and they, they're screwed. So fortunately, I haven't spent a whole lot of the money that I made on YouTube. The biggest purchase that I made was that $10,000 Corvette that I bought um, back in July and that's pretty much the only really big thing that I bought. I bought my computers, that was only a couple thousand dollars. So I've got the majority of my YouTube money still in the bank, but the IRS is about to take a big old bite out of that. But to make a long story short, I wanna buy my new Corvette before my birthday. My birthday is May 11th and I wanna have the Corvette between when I pay taxes and May 11th. Um, just because I want it on my birthday. And another thing I want to touch on is why I want a Corvette. I don't want a Corvette because I'm like a flashy car guy. I don't wear like a lot of designer clothes. I'm not trying to be that guy, that douchebag that likes to flash his money around. Um, as you can see, I'm not even wearing a watch. But I'm just really, really passionate about Corvettes. It's a dream that I've had for a very long time to be able to buy a new Corvette. Ever since I was little, I wanted a Corvette. So the first thing I bought when I started to have money was that classic Corvette, my 1977 C3. And when I bought that classic Corvette, I got bit really hard by the Corvette bug. As soon as I got that Stingray, I wanted a new Stingray. I wanted a, C, I wanted a C7. So I told myself, I promised myself, as soon as I was able to do that, as soon as I was able to buy myself a C7, I would buy myself a C7. So I'm not buying it because I wanna be flashy, but I'm buying it because I set that goal for myself. And when I buy that Corvette, it's gonna be, it's gonna mean a lot to me. It's gonna be achieving a very, very big goal for myself. It's something that I've always dreamed of, something that I just set for myself to do. And it's just something that I need to do um, just to prove to myself, hey, you've gotten, you've gotten really far and you've been able to do this. Because maybe six months before I bought that classic Corvette, I told myself, I was starting to make a little bit of money on YouTube. I told myself one day I'm going to buy a classic Corvette. Six months later, I had that Corvette. And when I got it, I told myself, hey, you know, you're doing something here. One day you're going to be able to buy yourself a new Corvette. You're going to be able to buy yourself a C7. Set that goal for yourself in the back of your mind. And I did. And now I'm able to do that. I'm able, I'm able to do it right now. I just want to make sure that the taxes are going to be what I think they are. It's not going to be anything crazy before I go and buy the Corvette. I'm definitely going to have enough money left over, but I don't want to be broke um, from buying a Corvette. Because what I want to do is I want to buy the Corvette in cash. I don't want a car note. I don't want a car payment. I don't want to have any kind of debt. I want to, I want to buy the entire thing in cash. So I'm waiting for these taxes to hit so I can just take all the money and go buy a Corvette cash money just, you know, just to get it done. I'm not going to be the guy that has a car note that they can't afford. I'm going to have that car in cash. And if I ever need to sell it, I can sell it for the full, you know, whatever I want to get for it. And I'm not going to owe any money on that car. 
All right, so I'm sorry I didn't get to all your guys' questions, but I'm gonna do one final question here because this video is getting really, really long. So SwiftyOS10 asks, what's it like being a notable YouTuber now? Has it changed how you approach certain situations or not? Um, so it's actually really mind blowing to be in the position that I'm in, that I'm in. I do really enjoy being a YouTuber. I don't consider myself famous. I don't really consider myself notable, as you put it. But it has changed a lot of things. Like I said, I've been going to the Arnold Classic for 10 years now. Um, and this year was certainly, you know, the most different experience that I've ever had at an Arnold Classic. Um, the number of you guys that came up to me during the Arnold Classic blew my mind. I mean, pretty much every line that I was waiting in, and I was wearing a Nick Strength and Power shirt, there are people coming up to me left and right. And, you know, in past years at the Arnold Classic, obviously nobody knew who I was because I was a nobody. I still think I am a nobody, but the fact that so many people recognize me, it really changed my Arnold Classic Expo experience. It was, a whole, it was a whole different thing. People were coming up and taking pictures with me while I was still waiting to take pictures with, you know, the big Ramis and the Lee Priests. There were people coming up to me while I was in line waiting to get a picture to, to ask me for a picture. And that was mind blowing. So that changed kind of my Expo experience. And it was the same way at the Olympia. So the main thing that it changed is my appreciation for you guys because I realized you guys aren't just numbers on a computer. You guys aren't just random usernames in my comment section. You guys are real life people out there that are fans of my channel and coming up to me. And it just really reaffirms that I'm doing something right. It's not just, you know, anonymous troll comments. It's not just anonymous accounts. It's not just numbers. It's actual people that I get to meet. It's actual people that are in the gym lifting. They've got good physiques. These are guys that are out there killing it that love my content to get motivated or they just want bodybuilding coverage or they want information or they want news. I mean, they come up to me to meet me and it just really validates what I'm doing here on this channel. So I appreciate each and every single one of you guys. That's gonna be the Q&A, guys. Um, don't forget, I'm giving away a $500 Redcon 1 gift card. All you gotta do is like this video and comment this video and you gotta be a subscriber, obviously. And I'll just pick a random comment to get that $500 gift card and you'll have to send me your information your, uh, to send over to Redcon to give you guys a gift card. So please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if you wanna see more Q&As. Thank you guys so much for watching. Nick Strength of Power, signing out.